All right, everybody, away we go. Welcome to today's call. It is Friday, my favorite day of the week, uh, March 29th of 2019. And this is the TRC, the Realty Classroom Sales Training Call. And I'm always excited to do this one. And I know that some of you have sent me a couple recordings. I think I saw Chris Egan come in. I know it's Clubba, you are out there. But just so I fully disclose, I am fresh off of two listing uh, appointments this morning and literally just sat down in the seat. So if I'm a little discombobulated to start um, and I don't have your recordings, I will pull them together as we go. But I also have in the hot seat with me uh, Autumn and Laura, who are just off camera here today. And the, we really, I know a lot of the mastermind members you wanted at this conversation with Autumn, who in a very short period of time, following the strategies <laughs> that we already have in place, um, has had some success having some conversations. But again, I'm going to say this in full disclosure um, to all of you trying to figure this out. The very first step in getting somebody to help with telemarketing and do it correctly um, has everything to do with us understanding how our business really works. Okay, So here at, at Griffin Realty Group, we study, Laura and I especially, we study this business all the time. Every day, we probably spend more time studying the business than we do anything else. Um, and that means including doing the business and going out and, and doing what we do. So I think that's a critical thing here to understand is that when we went out looking for Autumn, there was something very particularly being blasted out there. And, and that is, um, you know, we went out there and we, we called out for uh, you know, autumn. <laughs> we just did, right? I mean, we were looking for somebody who, who understood um, telemarketing. We called it prospecting, but we had an understanding of prospecting that cheats now more towards a better definition and the word telemarketing because you have to tele market your message before all of this other stuff. I'm just telling you that there's more leverage in getting your market. If you have a small business or you're out there trying to do anything, telemarketing your message is really, really quite crucial. Um, and it's important to do. So, um, Hey, you know what? I just recognized that maybe I started broadcasting on the wrong channel here, but I'm going to fix that. Um, sorry, a little snafu there. So, so the point is, we have her and she has two weeks in of talking about this. So I'm most definitely going to defer to her in the beginning of the call. And what we'll start off with, and, I, and again, for the sake of time, um, you can give us a synopsis of somebody who is a 40 years of experience in telemarketing. Almost. Okay, almost 40 years of experience in telemarketing, mm -hmm. but not in real estate. No. And I think that's the most encouraging piece here for everybody is to not get intimidated <clears throat> by your resume and skill in telemarketing, but to maybe just chunk up and we'll just keep this neat little piece first. Just to chunk up for now, um, what you've discovered about real estate. Mm -hmm. and, and again, it's been primarily in the context of expires, but I want to be careful not to go down just that lane with everybody. Okay. So I was thinking about it on the ride back here. What I want to extract from you is the reality of picking up the phone and calling somebody. Right. And so the first beat is what we're finding on the other end of the line. Okay. I think everybody prepares theoretically for the ogre, right? right. The big bad ogre is coming. Yes. And, and I think your your experience has been contrary to that. Absolutely. Right? So so um, why don't we speak to that first? And so just a synopsis while I clean myself up here and line up with that mic close to you. Okay. Well, the first thing I want to say is that there are no ogres on the other end of the line. There are people just like you. The advantage that you have is that when you get on, when you dial their number, you have a script, and I put that in quotes. Uh, you already go in armed. When they answer the phone, they have no idea what they're going to hear after they say hello. So you have an advantage right then and there. Um, the second point I would want to make is that in all of the other things I've done in telemarketing, one of them being investments for many, many years, uh, there really is no difference in product, idea, uh, whatever it is that you're promoting, giving to them, selling to them, there it's all the same fundamental technique that you're going to use when you're speaking to someone on the phone. The advantage of speaking on the phone, 
Your advantage is they cannot judge you by the shoes you have on your feet, the way you've styled your hair, uh, the color of your lipstick. There's no judgment there. What you have to use is your voice, and that narrows the field as far as what you're working with, and that's what you need to use. My experience with real estate, knowing people to the degree that I know them over the last 40 years, uh, I used to think that I had it distilled to, you know, eight different personality types. Well, you know, there's probably more, there could be less, but I can usually tell when they get on the phone and say, hello, what I'm going to deal with. Um, what I have dealt with so far, because there are no ogres in my mind, mm -hmm. Uh, what I've dealt with are people that are very, very frustrated guys. And this is something that you really need to understand is that they've had a bad experience there or they've had a great experience, but their home hasn't sold. They're frustrated. They're discouraged. They may have a house lined up. They'd like to buy, but they can't get to that house because they can't unload their house. Um, we all notice that they, the, the pricing often is really bad. They have realtors that some one woman told me the realtors were drinking beer on the porch at a broker's open and had not invited other brokers, just two others from the same company. You've got some really bad experiences out there. So what I do when I call is I come in as a helping hand. I listen. And without getting into the specifics of how you telemarket, which we can get into later, uh, I will tell you that you definitely want to come in as a helping hand, very respectful. You want to speak to them the way you would need someone to speak to you if you were a frustrated home seller, which we, what I've garnered already is, and I've seen over my years of, of being alive, it's a very uh, almost traumatic experience to sell your home. So um, I have had many good conversations. I've only had two people hang up on me and uh, out, of how many? So out of, out of probably 20, I don't know how many packages I've got out, maybe 15, yeah. maybe 18. 15 and I out of the, that means I've only had about probably, well, maybe I've had 25 contacts and there's been various reasons because they're at various places. Um, but there's only been two that have been what you would call rude. To me, it's not rude. I'm happy they're That's hanging. A lot of, I mean, you've had substantial conversations with 15 packages. Yes. And by the way, just so everybody has context, if you join the call a little bit late here, um, we're, we're talking with Adam on the sales, uh, I did That's okay. Everything. Everybody yeah. does that. Yeah. We've given her an aggressive personality. That's right. We renamed her and made her a man. That's right. right? Um, and I don't want that. Yeah. No, so. So, well. so, so, so I think the, the, the key here is, can you tell John, I'm in the middle of sales call. Yeah. Blown, not this phone. Um, so um, if you could, um, I, I'm just really thinking, I was actually fascinated by watching the process that you had your eyes closed while you were visualizing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I wanted to share that with them because they can't see you. Right. It was fascinating when you were going through that to me. I pointed to Laura and I said, look at her. She's processing this with her eyes closed. Right. Um, because what you're doing is you're taking yourself through that journey again. That's right. And you can see it. That's fascinating from a pro telemarketer. Um, you really see this, don't you? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And if you don't have that vision, yeah. you're not going to complete that call to yeah. your own satisfaction. So the context here that we have to share with them so that they're clear, and because I want to take it out of context. Okay. In other words, I want to I want to chunk it up because I don't want to go down the, the path of just expired. Some people here don't deal with expired right. at all. Some people deal with internet buyer leads, whatever okay. the case may be. But what I want to highlight in my experience is that I think what you've already discovered in two plus weeks of doing this uh -huh. is there's pain out there. Absolutely. No, no doubt, right? No and, doubt. And, and this frustration, Absolutely. confusion, people are lost. And I've been trying to make this case for quite some time. It's been my passion is that if we will just simply understand that, Mm -hmm. and empathize with it, yes. which is why I think what was interesting when your eyes were closed, you were having more um, of something akin to an empathetic recollection. Absolutely. Right? Like, I, I think that's just very, very fascinating to me. I'm always mm -hmm. looking, right? Always. Mm -hmm. So to see somebody who's been in telemarketing, and you've had some tough sales in telemarketing. You, you've been somebody who's actually sold gold and silver coin. Yes. To somebody as an alter alternative investment, yes, where there wasn't necessarily this kind of pain, this kind of emotion. Oh, not right? at all. Yeah. No. So it's, it's fascinating to see that you're able to 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 call upon that empathy. 
Um, just before we open up the mics here, one, one more thought here, one more question mm -hmm. is that what has been the biggest surprise to you, positive or negative, about telemarketing in the context of real estate? In real estate? Yeah. Um, the biggest surprise for me has been people that continue to keep the same broker. Now, I understand that it could be a friend, it could be a relative, but they list five, six, seven, eight times. They get the same result. The house doesn't sell. Yeah. They're very angry and they don't want to talk about it, but yeah. they will talk about it with me. Yeah. Yeah. And I find that surprising that it goes on for so long without them being able to say, you know, I need to branch out. Yeah. I need to reach out. Yeah. So in the context of real estate, that's, that's it, context There's, of, I'm sorry, in the context of expireds, that's a fascinating the, the, the thing. Too. To that they don't know. talk to anyone, that they stay in the misery. And, and so what I, what I think will be fascinating to learn as you go forward is digging deeper into that because in there lies a deeper problem. Okay. Yes. So it's not just that somebody can go list the house, take a shot at it and, and, and try to sell it. And Laura and I are discovering this too. Real estate is the single largest emotional and financial combination of a transaction yes. that people make in a lifetime. I don't care how quote unquote savvy they are or not. Okay. Some people say, oh, they're so savvy they do that. Well, no, nobody is prepared uh -uh. for the onslaught that is a residential transaction. Uh -huh. Nobody. It, and it catches you off guard. I'm in the middle of trying to sell my own house. I, I wasn't a good client for the first 90 days. No, and I let you. Right, and she let me, <laughs> which she shouldn't. Why? Because what happens is you become somebody who, who's emotionally attached to the situation. Yes. And even when you're the coach, <clears throat> you lose your logic. I you, because you're, you're always looking for that asset value to be something greater, no matter how – and not that everybody does that. I've gone into houses where people say, what is the number? And it's not like they were in a desperate situation either. There are some highly emotionally intelligent people who just get it that there's math to this business. There's a number. They're motivated to sell correctly, mm -hmm. and they just give you what they need, and it's done. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. But it's all the rest wherein lies the opportunity for all of the folks who are training here today. Right. Is that that curiosity seems to be lost. And what we're losing it to is fake, false information. You talk about something that's fake. Our perceptive belief that picking up the phone and calling anybody is some sort of a, 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 an Taboo. interruption or a problem that yeah. you're causing that is so far off base mm -hmm. if you'll just simply take the context. Now, of course, not everybody's accepting of it. Not everybody's circumstance warrants the need for any assistance. Sure. And you don't always know that calling in. Sure. Right? For example, you picked up the phone today in front of me. You called and expired. Guy said, it's pending. Right? Right. Okay, so you don't need us. That's legitimate. Okay, sorry. Right. Good luck with it. We'll keep an eye on it. Hopefully everything goes smoothly. Right. right? And I'm done. <clears throat> or even if somebody just says, look, I'm all set. I mean, you're like, I'm not, if they're that frustrated. Right. Or you, you don't even know. Just accepting that and moving through that to the next one. Here's what I, I make it akin to. When you're in the health business, which everybody in any kind of service business is in the health business. You're not in the cleaning business. You're helping somebody take care of their house. You're not in the sales business of real estate. You're helping them find or actually sell the house. Right. You're helping them, right? It's the guidance business. And so I think what becomes extremely important is that we remember that calling and that paradigm shift changes everything. Mm -hmm. Look, sounds like I caught you at a bad time, but let me just reiterate. I only called you to help. You might need it down the road, it's in the package we sent you. Mm -hmm. We just want you to know that. All right, let me open up the mics here because I want to rock and roll here. You, you, can you all hear me okay? Everybody hear what she was saying there? Chris, you texted me, so I'm assuming we did, yeah? Chris, Egan. Yeah, sorry. All right, all right. I got a couple of questions. Actually. Go, fire away. That's why I'm going to you first. Yeah, I'm going to you first because you texted me, so go, hit it. Gotcha. So, you know, on uh, A plus, I'm, I'm just really impressed with what I heard in your natural in, intuition and everything. But uh, thank you. What the what I was looking for was the the, the, the overall context, technical context. You know, so I've, I've written down context of the mailing to the people you're calling. First of all, are you calling to uh, 
expired stamp of probate what, and then what's the status date? Are these people that just came off within the last 30, or are you calling back to people that expired a year ago, or what's the context there? I'm, I'm calling people who've expired even five years ago. Any any call you're making, any type of call, they can't. You're still there to be of service. Right. So, so, so I mean, is it is it been a, a mixed bag of tricks so far as far as those, those twenty four, uh, you know, fifteen to eighteen packages you sent out, the twenty four contacts you made, have they all been up to five years ago expired, or there's some, you know, yesterday, or there's some this is kind of how you segmented your list. No, it's a. I would say it's a mixed bag. Uh, some of them just recently relisted, so I feel frustrated that I missed them, but there'll be more. That's one thing to always remember is that there's always abundance and there's enough to go around. Yeah, Certainly. keep going. And, and what, uh, what have you been calling as far as, you know, just time of day? Because it gives a lot of our challenges is getting people to pick up the, the damn phone. And then there's always been the question of the elite. Is his name message. Evan? Oh, what is it? Chris. Okay, there, there's is someone else asking a question? Okay, there, there is no perfect time to make a phone call. Any time of day or night uh, after 9 o'clock, of course not. You're not going to call after 9 p.m. because that's illegal. Um, you're not going to call probably before 8 o'clock in the morning. But any time between 8 a.m. and 9 p.m., is appropriate. Uh, investments are sold all day long. They, it's not a night job. Uh, you, you calling the fact that I'm getting packages out shows you that that daytime calling works, especially if you have more than one phone number. Right, if you got it. So, so if, if you approach your calls in specific blocks, or if you interspersed you know, two calls here, two calls here throughout the day, generally. Absolutely. I pound the phone. Got it. And, and, and what, what do your blocks look like? Is it a, or have they looked like? Well, I don't think of it, it, what day is it. I don't think of it in terms of blocks. I am a Monday through Friday person here. Uh, I get on the phone. There's a lot of uh, cleanup going on right now with the database as far as the lead list. So it, it sometimes will take a few minutes per lead, but I just keep plugging and I keep plugging. And what I would suggest for any agent, and not that I have experience being an agent, but as a telemarketer, uh, you have to shake your own hand with doing this at least two hours a day because you're going to have an hour that will go by where you won't contact anybody. And the reason I'm telling you to not give up and to do the full two hours, even if for an hour and 45 minutes, you don't get an answer to your phone is no effort goes unrewarded. If you spend two hours and you never talk to someone, it's going to get rewarded the next day or the next day. You have to uh, put your shoulder to the wheel and start grinding a groove of telemarketing. That needs to become one of your tools because it's the personal touch. It it uh, denotes caring about people, which is what they respond to. And you, you have to spend two hour blocks at least. Now I'm doing four hour blocks, if not six hour blocks. You need to at least do 10 hours a week, two hour blocks during uh, each day. Hey, Chris, Chris, the DPO, the DPPO 20 formula, when originally devised, its intent was to make sure that everybody was doing five. OK, because she's talking to you as a telemarketer who has been brought on to my personal team because we have the need, because as we expanded our business, meaning Laura being the first person with me, and now Autumn being the second for that personal production, there are just a, a, a lot, there's a lot to do. But for anybody that, that is not at that stage, there's, look at zero is zero is zero every day of the week, right? So when you start at zero, um, that's just what it is. But I think that the key takeaway from what she said, so it applies to everybody, is that when you are telemarketing your message, and I'm going to repeat that <coughs> terminology over and over, because I think too many of you to see it as cold calling or your, your appointment getting and all that. If the appointment is there, here's a pro, hasn't got me an appointment yet, and I haven't asked at all. 
I'm more interested in how many packages do we create? Do we make an offer to that person of upgraded service? I'm much more interested in the correct order of things. We are not sitting here obsessing over an appointment. We know those come as a byproduct of actually telemarketing our message of sharing our plan. Period. Paragraph. That's it. Well, right. Every and, every and stage has to be done 110 percent for sure. And so that's absolutely, Chris. Uh, it's paramount that I get that across to you, that this is a telemarketing of a message that we are guides. We have a plan. We're going to get it in your hands, whether or not you choose to do business with us. And now remember, for all the mastermind members who have been you know, pounded over the last multiple months about staying inside that geography, the benefit over the long tail or the long run investing in this brand, it's just invaluable. So if you see it that way first, there will be a byproduct. But the key tactical thing she said was that when she sits down there, she's not going to sit there and cry because in the first hour she can't get anybody. She's going to continue to go through that Absolutely. because she knows over the course of, let's just take 30 day block. Over the course of the 30 day block where there is a consistency and a diligence to telemarket the message for the act of creating new people in a relationship is goal number one. And nobody's teaching it. Nobody's talking about it. In every business, if anybody's hearing this on the internet, in every business that's a service business, everybody is just pursuing or teaching you to put somebody in a headlock. and. It, would you, any of you listening to this want that? And the answer is no. Go shopping. Go to Trader Joe's and go down the aisle. And when somebody hijacks you and said, hey, we got some samples. We want you to take it. Eh. Notice at Whole Foods, they don't do that. They just stand there and they stare at you. No <laughs> samples. Right? That's all they do. That's all they do. I love it. Yeah. Because if I want to go over and engage in it, just the fact that you have it there for me is there. Right? I love that. Right? Yeah. Think about so it. That's true. Money. Look at the best brands yeah. and how they do things, right? Look at how you, <laughs> how you like to be treated and treat people that way. Well, right? Yes. So, all right, cool. Uh, I have two super simple questions. We like those. We like those. Part. Go. You, know, you sit down and you hammer this list of 24. If you leave it voicemails, if you get voicemails, are you hanging up? If you then call back, how long do you give it before you call back? You know, well, the what's that? The computer program, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you, Chris. The computer program has has everything on a loop. So I, if I feel I need to call someone back sooner, I'll just jot it down. But the computer has me on a type of loop time-wise so that that lead's going to come up in front of me again. Um, no, I don't leave voicemails. Once in a blue moon, I will leave a voicemail, but I would suggest that you do not leave voicemails in real estate because these people are getting pounded and they're getting muscled by aggressive agents and you don't need to be aggressive because we have the product. So you, oh, you want to be, oh, no, the skies are opening up and the light is shining down. Yeah. Oh my gosh. You, you want to. You want to be you want to be that that different person. And the response I'm getting is, I had one woman. I don't know if you were on when I said this before, but she said to me, uh, "I can hear that you're honest." Now, generally, if someone says to me on the telephone, "Oh, uh, you're a good salesman," that's the death knell. That means I have failed and I have not caught them. So when she said, "I can hear that you're honest," I thought, "Oh, here we go. She's going to tell me I'm a good salesman." I tried to get off another two times off the phone with her because I thought she wasn't a prospect. She kept me on the phone and she told me another two times that I was honest. I got a package out to her. So I'm that different person that is somewhat innocent and just there to be of service. I'm not trying to take the lead like they have a bull ring in their nose and I'm trying to uh, clip a snaffle on it and pull them towards Griffin. I'm the person that is there wow. to find out what's wrong and how we can help. Yeah, perfect. Did okay. I did I answer? Yeah. Did, yeah. Did, yeah. What were you going to ask? Yeah. Because what, what were you talking about when she said that? When she said, "Oh, I I feel that you're honest." I mean, what brought that out? Exactly? Uh, I mean, I, I yeah. was I was simply I was simply asking questions. I we were I was asking her, you know, how, do you have an idea if you could give me just one reason why you think that house didn't sell? 
um, what would it what would it be? And so, you know, you have to remember the three basics. People like to hear their name. People like to talk about themselves and people want you to talk to them the way or you should be speaking with people the way you would need to be spoken to. And so in, in talking to this woman uh, and letting her talk about herself and her house and, and the failure and the this and the that, uh, just being a listener got her to say, well, I can hear that yeah. you're honest because I wasn't muscling her. Well, what do we say all the time, Allison? People will su support what they help create. So if they help create this conversation and it's not an attack, it's not an assault, it's not like I just want to take, take, take. Yeah. And look, it's, it's not new on the internet. Go everywhere with any any intelligent guru who's out there talking about help, helping right. for any industry. Um, Gary Vaynerchuk wrote a whole book on it, right? Um, it, it is the give, 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 ask formula mm -hmm. uh, that's been around forever. And so I think the answer to the, to the question is more so the structure of and the belief system of what's happening here. The context can change. We can go from expires to probates to internet buyer leads, internet seller increase, Doesn't whatever matter. it is. Doesn't matter. It changes. <laughs> Right, yeah. the context changes, but not the formula. The formula right. is always the how same. How can I help you? And then that's where I say everybody here needs to adopt that unique selling proposition that is is really doable for anybody. Which is, I am just a guide, but I have a plan, and I have a very very strong belief that our plan can benefit you, and we want to tell you a little bit about that plan. Um, that's what they need, Allison. But here's the challenge. Okay. Here's the challenge with telemarketing. Okay. Every time you're calling all of you that are still the lead junkies for internet buyer leads, whether it be expireds, probates, I don't care. Let's just gear shift into what's universal. When you pick up that phone and you get into right. this mode, you have to understand what they want by being a student of the business. In other words, Flipping the switch and pretending you were them on the other end of the line. Right. What is the experience that they're going through? Let's go back to the buyer internet leads where, where I think a lot of people stopped telemarketing because it, you didn't even want to do the job again. No. Laura did not want to come back from Hawaii, take her job back as a telemarketer, inside sales agent, and start calling internet leads. And the reason was manifold. I mean, um, uh, so we had a referral into the group this week and I was talking to the gal and we were just talking about saying, look, the challenge is this. Scott Jones sent the gal by the name of Kia. And we were talking about her, her business being so great. And then yet the first thing somebody else was trying to train her was go get a, a list of distressed salespeople. And I'm saying, okay, well, that's fine. Is that congruent with who you are? No. I said, what do you think about it? She goes, I don't know. It sounds weird. I don't know why you're doing it. Right? <laughs> So the other problem is we as marketers or would-be marketers, some of us don't know anything about marketing. We don't, nobody's ever taught you the basics of marketing. Really, marketing is so that you can get your message of what you have uniquely helpful to those people in the geography within which you want to do business, period. It's like that simple. That's, mm -hmm. In my estimation, that's my, my understanding of marketing, um, which seems to be really working these days. And so I think you have to also start with before we start talking tactical and, and what do we say, I think you have to remember to whom would you like to speak? And are you doing the things to get to that person that you'd like to speak to? None of them are easy because they're emotional, they're hurting, they're confused, they're scared. You name all those things that go along with a real estate transaction. That's the way that we meet people. But if we come back to the internet buyer lead or seller lead, there's no problem with that person as a lead source. We go there, but we have to put ourselves in their shoes. Hey, it's Autumn from Griffin Realty Group. The reason I'm calling is because I saw that you used our website to get access to information. Is it working okay? Are you on the other end of the screen getting in your emails what you want to get? And is your experience easy? Is, is, it, is it what you want? Like, Instead of getting on there <coughs> with some script and starts pounding, right? so what are you doing? Why are you moving? What are you doing? Like it's that's weird at that moment in time. Yeah. It's critical because you, you well, yeah. Allison, you have to arrive at it at some point, or you go but not broke, up front. You go broke on the way to becoming famous, right? right. So, so I think you you have to remember certainly that this is a business proposition. We're not doing this as a charity because there's a lot of great charities you can go and contribute your time, energy, money, etc. This is a business, but it still has that charitable heart. 
at the base of it, right? If it's done correctly. Because what she's talking about is I'm not going to pull them by the bull ring and all that nice imagery she had. I'm going to magnetically attract them. Kennedy talks about it in marketing. This is a piece of marketing, telemarketing, that never gets talked about. You can use the very same methodologies of being charitable, being helpful, give, 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 right? Give, give, give. Don't even put the ask there yet. Because you will know when the ask is there. Mm -hmm. You'll mm -hmm. know it. It will scream when she said, I can hear that you're honest. Ask. You did your first job. Now you ask. Hey, you know what? It sounds like you're thinking about doing this, but not right now. Could you tell me when you're thinking about doing it again? Well, you know, I think in the next 12 months. What we find in our experience is that, that you're inside of 12 months. One of the most critical things that you probably want, not need yet, I'm not even at the need yet, what you want is access to information about properties when they sell because that's what's mostly affecting value in your neighborhood or in your category, period. So you, you, you ask for that timing when it's appropriate so that you can then make this offer of upgraded service because you have built a foundation and this happens sometimes very quickly. You can do this very quickly, inside and out, it goes very quickly. Make sense? Yep. Yeah, cool. All right, Chris, yeah. you Chris, you sent me some stuff um, that was recorded. Chris Kleba, are you there with your, your gang too? <clears throat> Chris? I'm here, Danny. Okay, so I know you've uh, got... Different. Yep, yep, Chris Kleba, you have some folks on here today too. So I know that you and Egan were on me um, uh, appropriately so that you would be included. So Chris, before I go listen to a couple of Egan's calls, um, are there beats... I mean, I know we covered a lot there, and hopefully your gang got some benefit out of that. But is there context that you wanted me to cover specifically? Hey, please, do you want to jump in and, and ask any questions? Um, oh, go ahead. Yeah, hey, Chris? Yeah. Oh, oh, I'm sorry, Chris, are you, are you asking? This no, 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 Egan. no, not you, Egan. Not you, Egan. Stay on the sidelines for a second. Get back on the bench. I got you. No, I brought. Hey, Lance, are you on the call? Yes, I am. Hey, cool. You want to jump in? Questions, thoughts? I don't have any specific questions. I, I was just ask. I was just curious with, with, the, with the Vulcan Seven that you're using, and I think others are using. Just how how has the experience been with that compared to anybody use Red X, and like what types of I guess um, scripts is what I was looking for for, for you know, for Fizbo's and some, some expires as well. Okay. All right. Lots. There's a lot. Let me unpack that. There's a, there's a lot of questions in there. Okay. Because you're really asking me what's the process <coughs> for working Fizbo's or expires, right? So let me just reframe the question for you. And, and the first beat is quality of information. If you're looking for leverage of a service company to go and accumulate the, the names and contact information of people, then, then I think the two companies that you referenced in context of expireds um, is solid, right? Both companies are solid. Um, sometimes, say, Vulcan doesn't cover, for example, Grant Van Dyke's area in Arizona, so he went with the Red X. He's ecstatic with their service, right? I think so. Number one is if you're going to use a service like that, it's about the accumulation of the best quality information. Do the research about whether they cover your area and if the quality of the information is good. That's beat number one. Beat number two is Vulcan has a built in single dialer to it, too. So for the expeditious use of time and the ability to dial, Vulcan 7 has a single dialer. Um, like Tony Legendry and others in the group. Our druthers, now that we have a professional here, is to use a multi-line dialer so that she can have more efficiency so that she can just dial the phone more. Because as you heard her say, there are often many times where manually dialing and not getting people to pick up could get monotonous. So we're going to cheat towards best technology that allows a professional to make the best use of the time. So that's the dialer. So quality of information, dialer. You can still single dial these things on your cell phone. And I highly recommend chisel and hammer before any technology, right? Just do it the, yeah. the old-fashioned way before anything else. Now, lastly, you talked about scripting, okay? 
Now, the danger with scripting, and I have them, you know, all mapped out right in front of me. So, yes, I can talk about that. Um, I think the most important thing that we go over um, in, in this group is introduction. And hearing Autumn having gone through all of this recently, I think what's most important about what I hear is, is tonality. And Grant Van Dyke in his deal last, you know, last week, he had an outstanding um, gear shift in tonality. I think if you, if you end up trying to get a script and memorize it, I think you're making a massive mistake. Okay. I think the piece that's memorizable, and this, I have a very strong opinion on this because I think everything is about being real. And the reason why she had a compliment for being honest, quote unquote, because she was real. Mm -hmm. But in the same breath, she knows the outcome that we need to achieve here. She understands the goal. So I think that the idea is, hi, this is Danny from Griffin Realty Group, right? Mm -hmm. This is where you're just going through. You know, you, your introduction is important. Now, I'm not going to get into advanced techniques that an advanced, you know, telemarketer brain has. She can change her tonality and she can meet people and she can test things. <clears throat> but for you, I would say 100%, make sure you have a nice introduction that says, hey, it's Danny Griffin calling from Griffin Realty Group. Reason I'm calling is because I saw that you did this or I know this about you is the essence of it. You have about four seconds, five seconds to get that out of your mouth. If you're making telemarketing calls and trying to get in a rhythm, it's very important to identify yourself. And very quickly, that word because, by the way, is a trigger. And if you get that in there, because what happens is there's a trigger. They're going to lean in slightly to hear what's in it for them. Period. Okay. And if you don't make that clear very quickly, I don't care what the rest of the quote unquote script says. You could be in trouble. I'm not saying you will be. Some people love to talk. They'll hang out with you and they'll listen. But you must, in a busy world where everybody's getting robocalled, bothered, everybody's trying to take, 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 and then give, maybe. It's very important to get this right and treat them like you. Hey, I've even heard Autumn say, just a quick call. She just, because she's a pro. So she's got a couple things she said. You know, maybe she hears the way that the, the tone and the way they said hello. And she dropped something in there That's just like that. Hey, just a quick call. Autumn from Griffin Realty Group. Saw that you expired. Just wanted to see if it was going back on the, you know what I mean? She can make an adjustment in that moment. But, right. But she's still going to identify herself. You still with me? Yeah. I, I missed this. Yeah. Chris, I missed, yeah. his, I missed his first name. Help me out so I, I'd rather call him by his first name. Yeah. Jeff? Yes, Jeff. Okay, thanks, Jeff. He's in his. He's in his. Uh, so, Danny, I, I'm, 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 yeah, I'm totally with you. Like, as far as the script, yeah, I don't, I don't go off a script. Like, but as far as like an icebreaker, yep. like you just kind of answered for me. Yep. That's that's kind of what I was looking for. Cool. I mean, it's more about conversation and listening to what they sure. want or need. And for sure, Jeff. You can, Jeff, you're yeah, an intelligent not, guy. Yeah. Listen to how articulate you are. You're an intelligent guy. Trust that before you trust anything else. But let me give you the next beat. Right. I think the most important thing is preparation to be able to have that plan of value. Okay. What I've done, Jeff, is I've tried to simplify it for myself. And I just, I'm, I'm coming out of a list, a listing presentation this morning. Okay. People that I don't know. And that's the context. Hang on one second. We got a lot of loud mics here. So we, Jeff, we come in in the context, always from a training standpoint, to train for the person we don't know. Okay, because that's the one that scares us the most. And so sticking with sellers for a second, because that's the most important part of this business. I think it's important to understand you must have some confidence in a basic understanding of a plan that you're going to give to them. And if they, they give you the business, you're going to take them through. So I know that I have such an enthusiasm for all the micro details I understand about this business. I'm in danger of running my mouth too far when I first meet somebody because I'm enthusiastic. And the problem is, take it from a coach, the problem is if we don't learn how to chunk up what the benefit is to them, we lose them. And on a telemarketing situation, let alone a face-to-face -face presentation, that window is so tightly compacted and they're making such, such quick judgments 
on you in that moment, that it needs to be clean. And the way that you do that, I, I had the benefit of doing some TV at one point in time with my brother, and, and it was always about the beats. Don't forget what the beat is because they're going to say something different than the last call. They're going to go quiet. They're going to talk too much. Whatever it is, you allow that, that moment to happen and you get back to your beat. So what I would say is when you're telemarketing, the first beat is, hey, it's me from here. And I'm calling because I saw this thing matters to you or this thing happened to you, period. Because you're saying I'm out there and I know you've got the situation. Hang on one second. <clears throat> then if it goes further because they allow you that because you did that first beat correctly and they allow you to go further in the conversation or they volunteer some information. Now it's important to do that listening. So you gain more micro context, meaning what I'm no longer on some generic script. I'm in a micro conversation with a real human who's just told me something else that matters to them. Now I know what they need. They need a better plan or they need a plan, whatever the case is. They've already tried it before. They've never tried it before. I know what they need. But in my enthusiasm, I can't come flying through the door and say, well, you need this. You need that. Right? Otherwise, off they go. Worse, I think the coaching and training out there that's horrendous is when you're taught to pit yourself against another agency or agent that's already done it, failed, or, or, or they bring up another name. And we de immediately default to defensive. It's horrible. I think, so the next beat is, what else can I do for you? You came on my website, you're looking at properties. It sounds like your timing's inside of the next six months. What I find is that if I upgrade the level of that information, that, that I can serve you better. So I, I, I go further. Did you know is sort of that moment, right? So you're using this or this happened to you. Did you know there's something better that I sent you? Did, there's no, did you know there's something better I can give you, right? It's, it's, a, it's a soft offer of an increase in that level of help. Does that make sense also? Yeah. Okay. So it's a matter of my confidence is in knowing the process that I want to share with them. And I don't care whether they do business with me or not in that moment. Genuinely, you have to own this gift giving mentality. You have to own it. And you have to say, look, I am here to help you. Well, you know, my sister's a realtor. No problem. We sent you the, you know, we sent you the information anyway. I think you'll find it helpful and you can share it with her. Hey, by the way, if it doesn't work out, We'd be happy to pay a referral fee. Whatever. You're always thinking abundance. The minute you think scarcity, you're drowning. Okay. There is abundance. I, I just think that it's important to go back to the uh, to the initial hello. Uh, and what I want to say is that I to set yourself apart from being the hello, this is Autumn Isles. I'm from Griffin Realty Group. Uh, first of all, I have a good cadence in my voice. But uh, the second thing I do is I will say something like, uh, I'm looking online and I see you have a beautiful home there. Right there, they bite me because they they like that I have said their home is beautiful. And that sets me apart. Their home might be awful and they might be crazy with their price. It doesn't matter. It's a beautiful home to me because I want us to sell it. Yeah. So, and there's, but, but there's also, let me, let me validate that. Mm. Let me validate that. I love, because I just did it. Uh -huh. I love going out to houses that need work. Yeah. Because I see the beauty in what in is, I walked into two houses recently, one with one of our agents, one this morning myself, and I see Excuse the beautiful me. captain's dormers. Mm -hmm. I see the unbelievable There's always lo location, something. the neighborhood. There's always a beauty. If you don't have that, that enthusiasm for the beauty in the ugly duckling, right. you probably don't belong so, in the business. So stitch that into your first three sentences. Hello, it's Autumn Isles. I'm with Griffin Realty Group. I'm looking online. I see your beautiful home. I'm wondering if you're going to relist it. That that if you don't want to use the word beautiful, find something else. But be a little more personal than just the average, because they're getting a million brokers calling them and they're hanging up on them left and right. They don't hang up on me because I've made it personal. Especially internet buyer leads, by the way. This has become a commoditized uh, business to that extent. And the consumer, um, and even the big dogs like Zillow are, are faced now with this challenge too, is that 
we, we, we had some delusion that what the consumer was just going to accept being pounded on yeah, no. and there was going to be no offer so that these lead gen companies were going to what, just get you somebody's name and it was going to be okay to, to exhaust to pound them. them. Well, yeah. No, it wasn't, No, but it is okay to check in with them. If you have to be the affiliate or it's your own website and, lead one more gen, and just say, Hey, thanks. One it's a noisy comment. world out there. Thanks. Can we can we make sure it's working right? right? Can we send you some info? What is wrong with that? Yeah, go ahead. Can I tell you the secret is to speak slowly. Give them all the time in the world to hang up on you. Hello, my name is Autumn Isles. I am with Griffin Realty Group. I was looking online and I saw your beautiful home and I wanted to ask you if you were going to relist it. I'm giving that person in between every single word, I'm giving them a moment to hang up on me. Okay. So make sure that you speak really slow because I'm going to tell you a secret. They're not listening to you anyway. The minute they hear your name, they've forgotten it. The minute they hear Griffin Realty Group, they've turned off. You need to speak very, very slow. No, and, and that's, you know, the, the point I'm making is give them ample time to not waste your time. Let them get off that phone so you can get on to the next phone call. Talk slowly. That's the secret of telemarketing is to speak very slowly. And they may not understand you or even hear you until you've said the same thing three times. What? That's called coaching. Don't you want to do that? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Egan, you're in the hot seat. You there? Yeah, yeah, we're here. Yeah, yeah, I'm here. I, man, my, uh, this is great. Okay. All right, hold on. Don't go off. Don't don't go off. Don't go off. Stay focused. I know you're excited. I'm going to play no him, not you. You know I love you. It's him I have to beat up, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right. So I'm... Hold on, hold on. No, 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 no. You, there you go. No, there you go. There you go. Hold on, hold on. I'm going to ask the question. You're going to listen. Here we go. Egan recorded call number one or call number two. Who do you want to listen to? I guess we'll go with recorded call number one because it's less, less random. <laughs> Candidly. Okay. Uh, okay. Hey, Hi, Mm-hmm. Yes. Hey, Cassandra. It's Egan from Egan Realty Group. Reason I was calling this. I just saw your house on that courthouse. They want the market canceled. Just wanted to let you know that you have some pictures and details of some Eating homes that sold in the price range you were at while you're up on the market. Just want to give you a heads up that was coming. I think it would be helpful to you. Um, okay. And also, in case you were still thinking about selling, Cassandra also Too included fast. our seven point plan that we followed over the last doesn't, 22 doesn't years to mm -hmm. help our sellers consistently be successful. Um, were you, uh, perchance, still thinking about coming back on the market? Um, right now, I'm just, uh, I've, I've had a change of card and I'm planning to keep the house for another year or two. Oh, okay, sure. But it looked like a beautiful home. What, what, you know, really unique home. Why do you think it didn't, uh, didn't sell? Well, it's, I put a lot of work into parts of it, but due to a divorce last year, I just wasn't able to do as much work as I had originally planned. And so condition was the feedback we kept getting. <laughs> so it's just kind of in that midpoint. You know, people don't want to spend over 300000 for a house that still needs work. So I get it. Sure, got it. And uh, where were you ultimately headed to if it did sell? Uh, actually, I have my eye on a house on Kenwood Hill. So. Uh, okay. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. To for further, further south, is that one still yeah. available? Or yeah. did it get away from you? No, it's, as far as I know, it still is. But I'm, I'm pretty settled on this decision. She's so I don't want to second guess it. Gosh, I got to. Uh, if, if you could make it all happen still to where you'd get out with, uh, of yours without having to put in any extra work and get transitioned into the house in Kenwood Hill, would you be interested in doing so? No, I, I've already kind of committed to stay. I've got a daughter who's running the upstairs of the house, and I've let her know that we're going to stay, so I don't want to go back on that. Right, I understand, certainly. Well, if your plans changed, uh, you look for what I sent out to you in the mail. I think you will find that helpful. And, uh, be you know happy to stop by and help personalize our plan for you at any time and see if you can if we can determine what went wrong there. Okay, thanks a lot. Thanks, and I'll take care. Bye bye. All right, so a couple things. So the first reaction before they beat you up because they're both looking at me shaking their heads. That the, the one clear thing is, um, I know you. And, and I just think you were a little nervous. So what that did was made you talk at warp speed. Uh -huh. um, although as your coach and guide, mm -hmm. I was proud of you for hitting the beats. They're in there. I mean, there's no doubt. It's very, very structured. 
Um, I thought it, it's only two minutes and five seconds. Um, so you, you, you certainly are not forgetting the beats, which means what? That the story of guidance for you is very clear, Chris. You, you understood how you could help her. I think the problem with being a little bit nervous is that you, you're just so fast that that's where your, your enthusiasm bubbles over. I was just talking about this, right? I have the same problem. When you're enthusiastically uh, involved in your business and want to help people, that's what it just sounds like. It sounds like that, right? It was all there. It was all good, but it was way too fast because you didn't, yeah, hang on one second. You didn't allow for her to be part of the conversation in the beginning. And quite frankly, it was so fast I think what, what Autumn just said in the beginning was that, first of all, we're only introducing ourselves <clears throat> so they don't like have, it, have them think it's a robocall or something, right? It's just a quick introduction to kind of set your foot in there and then to give them some context, okay? And she was into it. But as you look back at the two-minute story, she clearly had a change in the plans. She had a divorce. That was why she couldn't do some stuff, but she made a commitment to a child in a school, right? If anything, and I'm not even saying it was appropriate, but if anything, oh, great. How long will she be at the school? You know what I mean? So, I mean, I think she made it clear that she was going to make a move, and now she's not. And you know what? Again, I don't think you need to push too hard. I thought you finished up well. Um, I didn't think you need, you know, needed the big clothes that you had. You could have softened it a wee bit and said, all right, no problem. Well, we sent the information out. Um, keep a keep a hold of it. If your circumstances change or anybody else you know in the neighborhood is thinking about making a move, we'll be happy to, to you know to help. So you leave a nice brand footprint in the end, where there is no context for sale anymore, and she's got you stuck, right? But clearly, there's no prospect opportunity there. There was nothing. There's no need to push. She was very sweet, very nice, and it didn't happen. Go ahead. All right. My thought is, Chris, you have a beautiful speaking voice and that's to your advantage when it comes to getting on the phone. Um, you're also very professional, but you really want to be careful with sounding too professional where it comes off almost like a, an ad. Um, you, you know, a television or a radio ad, you want to slow down, slowing down and speaking really slow. Like I'm speaking to you right now. That will hide your fear of being on the phone and give you a natural sounding confidence that you need to have. My second point would be that uh, you've got, I, I think that you put yourself in the living room at the end of the phone call, you put yourself in her living room after she'd already said no to you two or three times. So in other words, you're trying to pick up and clean up and get everything you want to say in there. Um, I think that more time should have been spent right up front in talking slowly with her and finding out, you know, if they're getting rapport going um, and not jumping the gun and sort of having, you know, fulfilling your agenda while she's just sort of like, you know, I sort of imagine her hanging onto the bumper of the car and flapping like a flag in the wind while you're going. You want to also be very careful how quickly you get personal and you start talking to her about her kid or what her time frame is. I mean, she went and volunteered the information that she was getting divorced. That's very, or that she was divorced. Very sad. These are times where you really want to slow down and talk to them. Don't rush through someone who's just had a divorce. I know you have the empathy, but you're not belying it. Um, it's not about our agenda. We do have one, but it's not about our agenda. It has to be about them because they're the ones that are going to get you your commission, our commission. So that would be my feedback on that is yeah. talk slow. Yeah. And I think it, that goes back to where we started with the conversation <laughs> about the script is that you're an intellect. And, uh, he has a very high IQ. Okay. He's, got, he's, it's, and he's and, beautiful. And, 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 and you can and see you it. Can hear it. But the problem with high IQ is people tend to want to be so studied when they have a high IQ and so correct. It's talk almost like slow. they look back and they beat themselves to death if they don't hit the beats. And talk slow. So you're, I loved your analogy of he had her hanging onto the back bumper of the bumper. of the car flapping like As, a flag. And, and furthermore, although his speaking voice you so correctly called out. Beautiful. Is beautiful, <clears throat> articulate, intelligent. The problem is 
with the speed, he does have her trying to keep up with him. But more importantly, the speed and the diligence with which he wants to get a recording in there where, see, I hit the beats. See, I got the script done. Right. But what happened is in that diligence, you sounded more like an infomercial, although you pulled it off. Mm -hmm. I thought it was okay. Mm -hmm. Then I've heard some of these scripted calls, right, Laura, that sound like somebody's reading like a, an ad. Well, that's a whole other phone. animal. Correct. That's a different so animal. So I thought he got away with it just mm -hmm. barely, mm -hmm. but he lost her. And he, he wasn't and he, face right. to face with her. Yeah. You exactly. have to stay face to face. For sure. For sure. You can't jump behind her and yeah. start running. Yeah, for sure. And so, Chris, that's the problem with scripting is that in beats is that we, we lose that. It's okay to have a longer conversation. Yes. It's just okay. It is okay. It's okay. I mean, it, it, think about how hard it is to get people on there. If you had let her talk a little bit more, you hit all the right beats, mm -hmm. but if you had let her talk a little bit more, maybe there might've been something else there. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't know, but she's so nice. She gave you her rejection in a methodical way in the form of like a very fast paced tennis game. Hey, I said this, you said this, I said this, I said, even though it was nice, it wasn't a hang up. You still got rejected. Mm -hmm. And I think the rejection came from the pace of the call. Yep. Does that make sense? Well, he did slow down. For sure. And the, the second beat of that two minutes is far superior to the first. Well, I think it's important to know that the sales call rhythm is about walking from one corral and closing the gate behind you. And you don't get to go into the second corral. You don't even get to open that gate until you have firmly done the first part of the call. Yeah, that's good you don't get to close the gate and go to the second part of the call and open that gate and walk in. And you cannot do that. You can't jump around on, uh, well, I'm, I'm going to get into a different area, so I that's won't good. go on. That's good. I like that beat. All right. Questions about that from you guys, because we're towards the end of the call here. I'll take a, I'll go a little bonus time for Q and A in general. This has been a very needy, fast paced call, <laughs> right? And there's a lot here to digest. So go ahead, Dougie. Hey, uh, so I, I actually, uh, listening to Chris, I, I, I have a same tendency to speak really fast. Mm -hmm. uh, try at the, at the beginning of the call. And, um, you know, because I, I think we get so focused on trying to get things out in those first few seconds mm -hmm. so that we don't get hung up on or whatever. I'm, and I'm just trying to sort out, is there anything that we could shorten up at the beginning of the expired? You know, well, well, what do you say? Script? Well, what do you say? What do, what do you say? Give us an example. Uh, and again, you know, it's always helpful. Like Chris just did. Grant did, you know, last week. Grant had one of the greatest gear shifts that I've heard in a long time in the middle of a call. Right. He's got that. It, he, like Chris, has a wonderful speaking voice. These guys are both highly intelligent like you. They know their beats, but that just, you know, everybody's adrenaline gets rolling when you're picking up a phone because your outcome is so important to you. I get it. Mm -hmm. there's, there's business on the other end of a successful outcome. So so I, but I think the, the, the key is I wouldn't worry about them hanging up. I was here. And, and she didn't get hung up on, but she got cut short. And, and that was it. And that is what it is. Can I? Yeah, but let me, I want to hear what you say. So tell me what you're saying to open up. So but I just want to give you that advice. I wouldn't worry about somebody hanging up. I just do what you're supposed to do. I'd start there. What is he saying? Okay. Yeah, that's what I want to hear. Okay, so Danny, if, if, uh, if it was you, I, I'd say, uh, Hey, Danny, this is Doug with Sotheby's. I'm, I'm calling because I saw your property is, isn't on the market any longer. And I want to let you know I sent you out some listings that sold while your property was on the market. Hey, it looks like a really nice house. Why do you think it didn't sell? Um, he, the beauty of the house should have been in your second sentence. So you, okay. I so saw what she's saying is that the gift, and that's interesting too. They're like, I'm listening, I'm learning a lot myself today, thinking about all this rewiring. Mm -hmm. I was thinking what she was saying here is key because when you first get into that context, I liked his pace. Mm -hmm. Oh, was slow. That was and, good. It, and it's interesting now that you've really pointed that out. Slowing down the pace, Doug, made me listen to you. <laughs> yeah? Not that I'm not, but I'm saying it was almost <clears throat> like a weird, awkward moment where I was forced to listen closer you than I talk am. slowly. Right. Yeah. It's interesting. I was I was reeled in a little bit more. 
So then, but I, then I think what's interesting is her reaction. I'm watching her next time. We'll put you guys on camera. So <laughs> yeah, we'll put it down the end. But but the point is, I think what what she wanted to do was reverse what you were saying exactly, which was personalize. Like, hey, it. it looks like a beautiful home. Why didn't it sell? But in the same breath to teach you mm -hmm. what he's referring to is that what's supporting this from being a robocall, a cold call, mm -hmm. is that he has sent some helpful content to them. And that content is what they want. So I get what he's thinking. And it'll be interesting to see as we go forward, Doug. Um, it'll be interesting to see what works better. Well, I get what she's saying because she's saying, I mean, personalize look, it up yeah, front. Get yeah. that in there right away. You're a human being. You're not a newspaper to read. Yeah. yeah. No, I, I see where this is going. Did you get that compliment in? It, it shocks them because one thing I hear Chris telling me over and over again is people always say, oh, I've got a thousand phone calls. Oh, I get tons of crap. So, like a so here's just a piece of paper in the pile. So when you stop them for a second and give them that compliment, they kick that vein. Then they tell you why the house didn't sell or where, whatever information they volunteer, hopefully. That's and right. that way, then you yeah. can segue to why your plan makes yeah. sense. Agreed. I rarely. I rarely have anybody tell me that they get a thousand phone calls. Out of all my connections, I've probably had two people do that. And the reason is, yeah. is yeah. it's that's exactly. a that's a lot. They're not supposed to be. They're not supposed to be comparing you to those thousand phone calls because you're personalizing it right away. Get the beautiful home comment in there in your second line. We sent you some information. We we understand, you know, you have a beautiful home there. You know, get a little bit homey with them, you know. I mean, that may be the wrong word, but don't wait four lines in to tell them their home is beautiful or you've already lost their interest because there's nothing in that. Well, you lost what's important to them. Right. Doug, Doug thoughts? <clears throat> It sound like, hello, Chris, this is Autumn Isles. I'm calling from Griffin Realty Group here in Osterville. I was looking on the web and I saw your gorgeous home and I'm wondering if you're going to relist it. First of all, I sound interested in them. Second of all, I'm not run, running over them like a steamroller. Usually they'll tell me right up front, uh, well, you know, I was thinking about it, blah, 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 or nah, nah, I don't want to. And I'll say, well, well, why is that? Why are you not going to relist it? Blah, blah, blah. Well, uh, can, if you had to give me one reason, what would the reason be that it did not sell? Oh, uh, well, and then you hear the fr frustration and you hear the anger. Uh, and then you can say, well, let me do this for you. Uh, I'm going to blah, 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 send you blah, blah, blah. Oh, and we've already sent it. And let's take let's take it from there. I'd like to set an appointment for you with Danny Griffin, who is going to really show you how to sell that piece of property that's, you know, whatever. Okay. So, but but remember, slowing down, you have to laugh at telemarketing, you guys. You have to have a sense of humor. If you can't, if you can't get on the phone with people and you know, honestly, play a game. See how slow you can talk before they'll hang up. And I guarantee you they will not hang up. Get on Sorry, the phone. I'm hanging up. I, my ADD would kick in. No, Where, no. You give me more than not if I'm not. Like, dude, what's wrong with you? You okay? Not, <laughs> not if I'm choking. Not if I'm telling you how beautiful your house is. Not if I'm giving you something that's flattering you. Weirdo. Okay. Uh, honestly, <laughs> so you're a hard nut. I but think the, that the biggest mm -hmm. thing about slowing it down not only is a benefit to the consumer yes. but I really think the anxiety that you have yeah. while making the calls yeah. it have alleviates fun. that it does. you're not like yeah. feeling this amazing pressure no. to oh my god I gotta get all this in 10 not seconds at all. I'm laughing because what I'd like to do is just turn off all the phones right now because we're going to go back to work and we're going to go do this <laughs> <laughs> just remember uh, one thing yeah. talk slow yeah that's what I was just about to say. To summarize this call here today, if there's one takeaway, slow down and have a two-way conversation. Absolutely. Okay? And listen that's, to them. That's the number one thing. If you are in the service business and you are calling, and, and I'm going to take this across your whole entire business. If you're talking to a past client, somebody's in a closing process, somebody who's anywhere in the conversion module, somebody brand new, somebody who's just been met at a gala event, have a two-way conversation, just slow down. Mm -hmm. And a lot of you, it's nerves or enthusiasm. 
Or sure. worse. I get or, like or, that. Or worse, you have no clue on how to help them. <laughs> Study your plans. They, they can. It's almost like your pace makes them mirror you. Yeah. Like it, it's, it puts their shoulders down. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I've noticed. Like I've, I've been listening to Autumn for the last two weeks and I've tried to slow my calls down with our clients. Yeah. And I feel that it, it puts their shoulders down more. Because they become confident in you. Yeah. Their confidence. Like, well, she's not nervous. What am I angry and nervous so, about? So taking this advice yeah. I, for all you coaching members on the inside, I thoroughly reject it, and I will continue to talk at warp speed until you get the message. <laughs> get it. All right, listen, Dougie, Dougie, I'll let you wrap it. Any Anything else? Because I've got to go to Laura Reckmeyer. You are on here, darling. I will be sending you a link shortly um, because I have a one-on-one -on -one with her. So the um, question goes to Doug. Any more questions? No, I, I, um, I was... My only other thought was, uh, you know, what, what, what's a great voicemail to leave for folks uh, don't. if uh, we don't get in touch with them? You just heard what she said. Don't. I'm not going to fight her on it. Don't. Don't leave them a voicemail. Not unless you have rapport. Oh, okay. Just don't. Don't leave a voicemail. You're just going to dial their number again in two more days. And if they don't answer then, you're going to dial their number again in six more days. And you're going to keep spreading it out until you finally reach them. But you have to commit yourself to two hours a day to give yourself time for to not reach anybody. I like it. I like it. I'd rather send I, I look at if, you, you, if, if there's anything that replaces the voicemail it's the package you send. It's the emails that they're getting yeah. of the properties. OK, the content, send the content. Right. And then keep going till you get them, because there <clears> is not <throat> going to be enough prospect creation unless there are phone calls, okay? And the content supports it, not the message. I like it. I'm, I'm letting somebody with 40 years say the same thing my gut tells me. I don't like messages. It doesn't get anywhere. No one listens. Actually, here's what's worse, and I'll leave the call on this. I think every time you leave a message, you believe you've done your job, and you let yourself off the hook from picking the phone up again. Mm -hmm. And you say, well, I called, and I left a that. message, and there's where I think the real danger is done. I think you would, yeah. And this is where Lee, you know, still did a fabulous job in resurrecting his business or moving his business in this direction where he tripled his sale price is he understood what I was saying about conversations. Mm -hmm. You must measure the number of conversations that you have each day, each week that you do this. And that those of you that are wondering why you don't have a consistent business is because you're not having enough conversations. And it's because you're leaving one-sided voicemails, let alone having one-sided conversations when you have them. So there's the biggest takeaway. Keep calling, keep slow calling, down. keep calling, and slow down. No so voicemails. So that you're not nervous. Right. So that you're not, I'm more interested in all of you. My job is to help all of you. Slow down so that you're not nervous. Because all of you can be helpful if you take yourself out of that state. Tony Robbins does a great job of talking about change your state. Here's how you do it. I have a plan that is uber helpful to these people, and I'm just going to get on there and listen. I'm going to help them with whatever they want so that if there's an opportunity, I can tell them about my plan. Just take a beat. Change your state. Yeah. Talk slowly. I like this advice. First things first. If you don't if you do not do the first things well, you won't sell the house. Yeah. All right, everybody. Enough of me. Enough of them. Thank you, Autumn. <laughs> Thank rock, you. Rock, 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 rock and roll. All right, get out there and make those phone calls. And I want some recordings so we hear you speaking slowly. Yes. And intelligently. All right? All right, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Here's the thing. It doesn't sound slow to the to person on the other line. It doesn't sound slow. To I can talk like this, and it does not sound slow. It's killing me.